welcome back. Um, welcome back to another session on animating with Axure. And this is the third session working on this specific prototype and interface. By no means we're done with animation. There is so much more of animating. Uh, we just need to find a good use case to cover all the other aspects or you know other things I can show you how to do in Axure. In this third installment of animations, we are going to cover how to make this a bit more fancy. So kind of building up on the knowledge we already have, what I want to do is animate um, maybe this headline as well as this sub headline as well as these bits, maybe just fade them in one by one, you know, create that type of recipe scenario and animating these bars in. Right, so if we open uh, the prototype, as you can see, I have already so much of different dynamic panels. It's already feels quite real. Now what I wanna do is kind of manipulate this thing. As you can see, I have just static objects basically. I have a, a headline, which I might just resize a little bit and convert to dynamic panel. You don't really have to do that, but dynamic panels tend to be quite good at manipulating content, so why not? And I'm just gonna say green for the green block, so we have identifier and headline. And then I also convert that into green subheadline. Uh, and I also probably gonna convert these bits uh, because why not? Again, naming is up to you. I like to keep it simple. So as you can see, we prepare our canvas and what we can animate. I'm gonna convert these bad boys next, uh, the bars of the chart. But what I wanna do before that, I'm just gonna take the numbers and also convert them to dynamic panels. Let's keep it simple though. So number one and the last one is number two, let's say. Cool, so most of it is converted. Now what's left is just a bar. Now if you look at the outline, so as you can see, there's a lot of green, 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 and that's how we're gonna know that it's um, in that section. And that's what we need to animate. As noted in other videos, plus plus is an indicator I use to identify what elements I need to engage with, let's say actual code or interactions. So it's always good to kind of find your own kind of set of rules of heuristics you can implement and use so you, you your workflow just becomes so much more efficient. But you know, needless to say, it's really up to you what you wanna do. What I'm gonna do next is I could just hide most of it, I think, because we don't really see any of it before we do something, um, at least what I have in mind. So I'm just gonna hide all the elements of that icon. And what I could do is either I could attach to mouse, uh, mouse over effect or scrolling down effect, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna utilize this arrow button and just take it down there so basically, if I click on it, the users are going to be taken down. And I covered it in the pre uh, previous session on, I think, back button and um, hotspots. And basically, I'm just stating the inter interactions on click, scroll to, there is such an interaction, and, and then to that hotspot, which I place now here. And so let's preview it. At the moment, you're, we're not gonna see anything whatsoever, but if I click on there, you can see we land on that green spot and everything is invisible. I could either move and animate like we did on a header, but that would be probably an overkill. If everything just floats from left to right. We also have the boxes bouncing in from left to right. So let's just fade in all these little things one by one. So I'm just gonna start adding actions on that click to that specific arrow, meaning to that trigger, we need to attach something. So I'm gonna say show and hide and just find my green things like so, as you can see, it's easy. So let's first animate the headline, fade in, we can slide down, we can, you know, do whatever, but I'm just gonna do that in, let's say maybe 
800, so it's quite smooth. And then maybe wait for half a second or so, so it's a bit like so. And then I'm gonna add another, and then another, and then another. And so that's how we're gonna build up our story. Subheadline is next. And fade in 800 again. And then we can also fade in the, the other two things. So let's say, wait another few seconds or milliseconds rather. Let's say half and show green bit. As you can see, if you highlight, it shows you exactly which thing you are looking at. So I'm gonna go for bit one and just animate fade that in 800. This is default and then wait another 400 milliseconds. Again, this is a lot of guesswork as you can see. So I can just go ahead and, you know, add all those values, but I need to test an experiment of what sticks and what looks best and wouldn't confuse user too much. Green bit, animate in, maybe fade again. Boom, let's test it out. Really quick, uh, easy and a little bit dirty, but that's okay. As you can see, it animated in all of them one by one. It's pretty smooth, but it's not smooth enough uh, because once we clicked on it, it took some time to scroll down. Now I'm gonna see exactly how much time. And it's one second and almost a half. So we missed basically half, like both of these. So what I would want to do after clicking that just before we animate in the headline, I'm gonna add another waiting time for the same amount of time. But let's say maybe one 500, so just one third second less than what's you know the expense of that easing out scroll down. And if we've tested out again, and I just click on that arrow, boom, much better, isn't it? Because it scrolled down. It had a little bit of delay, like really nice specific delay and then animated in object by object. What's missing now, and one of the last bits is animating those bars. Now, there is a lot of different ways of how to do the bar animation. I'm gonna show you the simplest way, the way I used, um, I think almost like six years ago and I found out it just blew my mind because it was like magic. I was working for employee benefits software company where we did a lot of dashboards, a lot of moving animations with bars just to engage employees in their benefits and their salaries and expenses and all that jazz. You know, so all the data visualized had to be like really dynamically, really snappy and really tell the story. And that's how you do it. So as you can see, I created dynamic panels and inside I have that bar. Now what I can do is either just by code say expand it to that size or I can say just swap the states let's say and, and let me just show you exactly what I mean. So I have this state one which is let's call it full bar right. This is how our bar is going to look like but also let's create another state which is empty state and let's make that state default so just drag up before that and as you can see that's how it's gonna look like. It's an empty state, which we can adjust like that, but there is nothing in it until we make it, you know, happen. So by the behavior, by the interactions, I'm gonna just tell it, let's say after we showed all those components, I'm gonna add another waiting time of let's say 500, or let's say 600, it's a little bit more than before. So you just can digest the information first and I'm gonna say set panel state of green, 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 bar one, let's say, to state full bar, so from nothing to something, and animate in, so let's say slide right and no animate out. That's really important because we're just animating the next state instead of replacing the state. And we can do it quite snappy, so let's say 400 milliseconds and ease in is usually quite good. And the last bit to do is to show a panel because it's hidden. That's really important, otherwise it's just not gonna work.
So let's preview that and see if my memory is actually uh, proving me right. So we animate the text bit by bit. Boom! That worked. Isn't it nice? I mean, it's a bit too fast for my liking, but if we adjust the text and say slide right mm, for, let's say, 800, so double the time and ease out, we could do a bounce. It's really up to you. Let's see if that actually does the trick. We scroll down, animate the text, boom, and then it animated in. Pretty cool, isn't it? We can do the same exact with the second one. So let's speed up. And let's see how that looks like. We scroll down. Again, everything animates in. Boom, boom. Two things done. So what's missing? It's just the numbers. What we can do is just fade them in after the animation is done for each of the bars. So it's, it tells a bit def different, better story. So as you can see, we have green number one, green number two, and all we need to do is this just to attach those bits to the channel. So let's say after setting panel state of bar one, I'm just gonna do an action, and I'm just gonna show that green bit I had, green number one, show animate in. Um, it's really up, you know, up to you to decide what you wanna do. I'm just gonna fade it. Uh, you could flip it, let's say, if you want to attract more attention from the user. Um, and I'm gonna make it a bit faster than the one which is before. So I'm, I'm gonna do that, no, no other options needed. I'm gonna copy this action as well and do the same, just dragging it under the set panel state the second time and just choose the green number two. I'm gonna fade in again with the same exact options. So as you can see, I added the show of a number just after a bar animation. Let's see how that looks like. Boom, we animate it down, everything falls in into place, boom, boom. As you can see, it's a bit too sudden because before we animate the sh number show, but I leave that to you because you can always add another action to animate wait for a little bit before it's animated. You know, it's really up to you. Um, you probably by now, if you followed every session, know exactly how to do so. But as always, I recommend to experiment as much as you can. And if you liked this video, give a like, subscribe to this channel if you're new to this. I really appreciate it. If you have other ways you could do so easily, leave a comment down below. Um, as always, share with your friend and I'm gonna see you next time. And next time we're gonna talk about more of the bar chart animations and how to do custom bar charts, let's say. So we're gonna build on top of this knowledge. So see you next time.